Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's episode of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters, co-founder and CEO of Brand Desk, where we work directly with visionaries to help build successful businesses and memorable brands. You know, in business, we often wear many hats and have to juggle a lot of different balls all at once. And it can be easy to get bogged down and feel like you're constantly running on a hamster wheel. When we don't take the time to step back, it can lead to burnout, both mentally and physically. In today's segment, we're going to talk about how to balance the responsibilities of running a small business with daily living to prevent burnout. First, let's define what burnout is. Now, according to the World Health Organization, burnout is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. In other words, it's when you feel overwhelmed, exhausted, and unable to meet the demands of your work. Burnout can have a negative impact on both your personal and professional life. It can lead to absenteeism, presenteeism, which is when you're physically at work but you're not actually productive, and turnover. In fact, a study by the American Psychological Association found that employees who reported high levels of burnout were more likely to leave their jobs. So, how can you prevent burnout? First, it's important to identify the signs. These can include feeling exhausted, both mentally and physically, feeling detached from your work, and having a sense of failure or inadequacy. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, it's important that you take a step back and assess what's causing them. There are a few common causes of burnout. One is working too much. When we don't take breaks or vacations, our bodies and mind don't have time to recharge. And this can lead to feelings of being overwhelmed, feelings of being stressed, another common cause of having unrealistic expectations. If we're constantly putting pressure on ourselves to meet goals that are unattainable, that can lead to burnout. So how can you prevent burnout? Well, first, you got to identify the signs and take a step back to assess specifically what's causing them. And once you've done that, there are a few things that you can then do to actually prevent burnout in the first place. One way to prevent burnout is by setting realistic goals for yourself. When we set goals that are too high, we put unnecessary pressure on ourselves, which can lead to burnout. It's important to set achievable goals, goals that you can feel a sense of accomplishment about when they're, when, they're, uh, when they're completed. Another way to prevent burnout is by taking breaks. When we're constantly working, our bodies and our mind don't have time to recharge, and this can lead to feelings of being overwhelmed and, 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 and feeling stressed. It's, it's important to combat this by taking breaks throughout the day even if it's just for a few minutes. Go for a walk, step away from your desk, or simply take a mental break. Finally, it's important to manage your time effectively. One way to do this is by batching similar tasks together. For example, if you have a bunch of small tasks that need to be done, group them together and do them all at once. This will help you to be more productive and efficient with your time. Another way that you can manage your time is by setting priorities. When we have a lot of things on our plate, it can be tempting to try to do everything at once. But this can lead to feeling overwhelmed and stressed, and we don't want that. So it's important to set priorities and focus on the most important tasks first. This will help you be more productive and avoid burnout. Listen, entrepreneurship is a demanding journey, but it doesn't have to be all work and no play. By taking time to prevent burnout, you'll be able to work smarter, not harder, and enjoy the ride. You see, achieving balance isn't as simple as dedicating eight hours a day to work and then the rest to your daily life. 
Because when you're running a small business, your responsibilities often spill over traditional work hours, and it's important, therefore, to find a way to adapt. So start by changing your perception of what work means. Being an entrepreneur is more of a lifestyle choice than anything else. You see, it's, it's not just about the nine to five. It's about making your work fit into your life rather the, uh, than the other way around. One way that you can do that is by setting boundaries. This means being clear about when you're working and when you're not. You see, when you're not working, make sure that you take time for yourself and that you do things that you find enjoyable. This can be anything from reading, going for walks, or spending time with family and friends. Another way to achieve balance is by delegating tasks. And we talked about this. You see, if there are certain tasks that you need to be done, for you or by you, then delegate them to someone else on your team. This will free up your time so that you can focus on the tasks that are most important to you. And finally, it's important to make time for your personal life. This means setting aside time each week for yourself and making sure that you stick to it. This, this is time that should be used for things like relaxation, exercise, and spending time with loved ones. It's not always easy to find balance as an entrepreneur, I know that, but it's essential if you want to prevent burnout. And by setting boundaries, delegating tasks, and making time for your personal life, you'll be able to achieve a healthy entrepreneurial work-life balance. Joanna has been running her small business for over three years. And after years of 12-hour days and 60-hour weeks, she's been able to build systems that help her manage the myriad of projects that her business takes on daily. But as her business has grown, so too has the demand on her time. And she's currently in the process of hiring a part-time assistant to help with some of those tasks that have been slipping through the cracks. But in the meantime, She's been working on finding ways to manage her time more efficiently. And one way that she's able to do this is by batching similar tasks together. For example, she now dedicates about an hour each day to answering customer emails. And this has helped her to be way more efficient with her time and has freed up her evenings and weekends for other pursuits. Now, another way that Joanna has been able to achieve balance is by delegating tasks to her team. She's been working on training her team so that they can take on more responsibility. No, it doesn't happen on day one, but she knows that she can focus on the tasks that are most important to her if she delegates the others to her team. And she can avoid burnout that, has, that therefore allows her to enjoy her work even more. Finally, Joanna has, find, has made a way to find time for her personal life, making it a priority. She now stops working at 5 p.m. each day and dedicates her evenings and weekends to spending time with her family and friends. And this has been a huge help because it prevents burnout and allows her to recharge outside of work. So let's review what Joanna's tips are for avoiding burnout. Number one, Batch similar tasks together to be more efficient with your time. Number two, delegate tasks to others on your team. And number three, make time for your personal life each week. You see, if you're feeling overwhelmed by the demands of running a small business, take a page from Joanna's book and try these tips to achieve balance. But I know you're asking, what if, what if you're just beginning and you haven't spent years building systems like Joanna? Maybe your business is brand new and you're, you're just working to get it off the ground. Or maybe like so many of us, the pandemic has been an immeasurable obstacle that has slowed down business, making survival a very real concern. Well, this sounds like you. I want you to know that you're not alone. You see, these challenges of 2020, they've been vast, they've been wide ranging, but one thing that we can all agree on is that they've been tough. So how do you find the balance between running a business and taking care of yourself when the world feels like it's falling apart? 
Here are a few tips. Number one, take breaks throughout the day, even if it's just for a few minutes. Step away from your desk, take a walk, or just close your eyes and breathe. This will help you to be clear, it'll help you to clear your head, and it'll allow you to come back to your work feeling refreshed. Set realistic goals. This is number two. Set realistic goals for what you can accomplish in a day, a week, or a month. We all know that trying to do too much will only lead to frustration and therefore burnout. And number three, <clears throat> make time for yourself each day, even if it's just for a few minutes. This is time that should be used for things like relaxation, exercise, and spending time with your loved ones. And number four, <laughs> delegate tasks to others on your team. This will help you to focus on the most important task and will prevent you from becoming overwhelmed. And if you don't have a team yet, here's what I want you to do. Consider hiring a virtual assistant, a virtual assistant who can help you with some of these tasks and, and take them off your plate and free up your time. Now, number five, and this is important, seek out support from others, not just in terms of delegating tasks, but in the form of, of a therapist or a support group, or just taking time to talk with your friends and family. You see, it's important to have someone to talk to who will understand what you're going through. Today, we've been discussing how to find balance as an entrepreneur. We've looked at how to batch similar tasks together, delegate tasks, and make time for your personal life. Now, we also looked at how to set realistic goals take breaks, and seek out support. But what if, despite these helpful strategies, you still find it difficult to achieve balance? What if the economic conditions right now make running your business next to impossible? Does this mean that it's time to quit? Does this mean that it's time to throw in the towel or to pivot? Well, we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll take a look and how you can effectively maintain your business while adjusting to meet these unprecedented economic challenges. Stay with us. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, Minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. I want to leave him, but I just can't do that to the kids. I keep finding her chatting with Scott online. Even though she says they're friends, something's up. He tells me it's no big deal. But it hurts so bad when I catch him looking at those pictures. Stand strong. No matter what you're going through, there is hope at the end of the line. Focus on the family. How can we help?
Hello and welcome back to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters and today we've been discussing how to achieve entrepreneurial work and life balance. Now before the break, we've looked at how you can batch similar tasks together, delegate tasks, and make time for your personal life. We've also looked at how to set realistic goals, take breaks, and seek out support. But what if, despite these helpful strategies, you still find it difficult to achieve balance? What if the economic conditions right now make running your business next to impossible? Does this mean that it's time to quit, throw in the towel, pivot? No, no, it doesn't. What it means is that it may be time to rethink your overall approach to managing your business. It's important and it's amazing how a shift in perspective can make all the difference. We've discussed how you can adjust your priorities, your schedule, and your tasks. But what about adjusting how you do entrepreneurship in the first place? Maybe in times like this, it's wise to consider diversifying your revenue, taking the burden off of your primary small business to earn a living wage, and instead of splitting that up, and instead splitting that up across a few supplementary pursuits. The gig economy is a powerful tool that anyone can leverage to help bring in additional income, offset some revenue loss, and maintain your joy while building your primary business. Now there are a few key things that I want you to keep in mind if you plan on leveraging the gig economy. First, it's important that you research and find quality opportunities. Not all gigs are created equal, and it's important to find something that is reputable and that you feel good about representing. Second, you want to be sure that you manage your time effectively. It can be easy to get caught up in the hustle of working multiple gigs and, and neglect your primary business or your personal life. Finally, remember that you are in control and you can choose when and how much you want to work. While the gig economy isn't for every, everyone, it can be helpful. It can be a helpful tool for entrepreneurs who are struggling to find balance. It's a way to adjust your approach to work and make a little extra money while you're at it. The gig economy provides flexible options from shuttling passengers to their destination, delivering food, packages, and even flowers to freelance work or professional or creative services. Websites like Fiverr, Upwork, and TaskRabbit are all popular sources for finding quality gig opportunities. Now taking the tips that we discussed earlier and including the diversification that I've just mentioned, your entrepreneurial work schedule could look very different, but equally as productive and rewarding. I want you to imagine waking up an hour earlier and fitting in a large batch of your business responsibilities between the hours of 8 a.m. and 12 noon. Now in the second half of your day, you're, you're now free to take on a gig, whether it's delivering passengers with Uber or Lyft, or to delivering food or taking on freelance work. Now, if you do this work from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., you can be home at a decent time. And if there's more work to be done on your actual business, well, consider taking a small nap, eating a little dinner, and then making an hour or two of evening business work a part of your regular routine. At first, this new schedule may feel like a lot. But if you're intentional with your time and you make use of quality tools to manage your workflow, it can be very, very effective. The gig economy provides entrepreneurs with an opportunity to pursue work that is supplemental to their primary businesses. It can help with earning extra income, offsetting revenue loss, and maintaining work-life balance. And by being intentional with your time, and your time management, and by utilizing quality resources, the gig economy can be a powerful tool for any entrepreneur. Take David for consideration. David, he's an entrepreneur. He's been in business and he has been impacted by the pandemic. Now, he adopted this new schedule to help make ends meet and to maintain his own work-life balance. Here's what David did. 8 a.m. 
to 12 p.m. every day, he did his business work. And then from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., he worked on a freelance gig, whether that was a gig on Upwork or a gig delivering passengers. And then from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., he had dinner, relaxed for a little bit, and then at 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, he did a little bit more work on his business. Now, this approach literally saved David's business. He was able to make up for lost revenue and he was able to keep his business running while also maintaining a healthy work-life balance. And what's more, he found that he actually enjoyed the flexibility and variety that gig work provided. He, like so many others, has found a way to approach entrepreneurship a little bit differently and has been successful because of it. So, what does this mean for you? Well, if you're feeling bogged down by the day-to-day -day of running your business, or if you're struggling to maintain a work-life balance, I want you to consider supplementing your income with some gig work. <laughs> there are many opportunities available, and with a little bit of research, you can find one that's right for you. You know, someone once said, the measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. And this is especially true for entrepreneurs. No matter what challenges we face, it's up to us to find creative solutions that work best for us. So, if you're feeling stuck or if you're just looking for a change, try supplementing your income with some gig work. That might be the answer that you've been searching for. And before we close, I want to take a moment to dig into exactly what it means to have a work and life balance. I mean, what does that phrase even mean? Well, for some, it might mean having time for family and friends outside of work. And for others, it might mean taking the time to pursue personal hobbies and interests. And for others still, it might simply mean not working all the time. No matter what it means to you, the important thing is that you find a way to incorporate balance into your life. Work-life balance is important for entrepreneurs because we often get so wrapped up in our businesses that we forget to take care of ourselves. We work long hours, we sacrifice our personal lives, and we never seem to have enough time for anything else. And you guessed it, this can lead to burnout, which is when we become so overwhelmed and exhausted that we can no longer function effectively. Burnout is a real problem for entrepreneurs, and it's something that we need to be aware of. It can sneak up on us when we least expect it, and it can have damaging effects on our businesses and our personal lives. That's why it's so important to find ways to prevent burnout before it happens. And one way to do this, make sure that you're taking time for yourself outside of work. And this might mean scheduling some fun time and some fun activities outside, making sure that you, you have time each week to pursue your hobbies. It might even mean taking a vacation. But whatever it is, make sure that you're taking time for yourself so that you can come back to work refreshed and ready to take on whatever challenges come your way. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Build Your Difference. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to share your own tips for work-life balance, please send me an email at info at pierrewalters.com. Until next time, remember to build your difference and make a positive impact in the world.